Chapter 10, On the Road. Me and Darian have just spent a romantic night together. But there's far too much to do today to bask in the afterglow. It's a bachelorette party day. You get dressed and head out to breakfast, still feeling the buzz of a night well spent. Unfortunately, no one else seems to be in quite as good a mood as you are. The vibe is decidedly awkward, and you seek out Ellie and Benny, finding them whispering on the edge of the dining area. What is going on this morning? Let's just say you were lucky to get out of the resort last night. The rest of us were doing some damage control with Shannon. He was in such a lousy mood after you told him Dad off yesterday. He picked a fight with Lucia. Oh no. They were both in tears. It was a whole mess. I feel so mad at Shannon. He deserved every word I said to him and his dad, but it's clear he didn't listen to any of us. His behavior is totally ridiculous, and I hate that it's ruining the most special time in Lucy's life. She is pretty miserable. Hard to blame her. An uncomfortable thought strikes you right then. Shannon's been a completely different person since I started dating Darian. Is it possible Darian was right? Is Shannon still hung up on me somehow? You okay, Lennox? You look like you just ate a mushy banana. Me? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Just gonna go get myself some breakfast. You slip out of your chair and track down the buffet, putting together a fruit salad despite having no appetite after what you've just learned. But before you can return to the table, a shadow looms over you, cornering you where you stand. Alicia, I bet that's you, isn't it? Or Alice. Linux. You swallow and nod, bracing yourself for chewing out of a lifetime. Alice. There are a number of errands that I need to be done today, and I think it's best you handle them and keep your distance for a bit. She tosses you what you realize are keys to a rental car. Have emailed you a list of everything you need to go do. Make sure you are appropriate and professional and do not be late. First up are the caterers. I should not need to emphasize how important that is. You clutch the keys in your hand as you listen to Alice's diatribe disguised as to-do list. You're her best friend is why. I'll get right on it. Her expression slips into one of shock as you comply without complaint, but she quickly covers it up. Good. Obviously Lucy is in no state to do any of this today. Of course not. I'm happy to help. As you should be. Truth be told, you'd do anything to get out of here at this point. Alice is doing you a favor. Or at least that's what you think until she points out the car. That's the rental car. I'll be lucky if it makes it out of the parking lot. I'm sure you'll be fine. Now go, you don't want to be late. Between the car and the speaking Greek, I'm afraid this afternoon is going to be impossible. Suddenly, there's a hand curving around your elbow and a warm body at your back. Darian. I'll join Lennox. This is definitely too much for one person, and my Greek will help. Darian, that'd be amazing. With you, I know it'll be a lot of fun. Damn straight it will be. Hmm, fine. But don't get distracted. Lucy is relying on you. You set me up to be sabotaged is what you did. As you and Darian get into the car, you contemplate saying something about your Shannon concerns, but quickly nicks the idea. The last thing you need to do is hide in the drama between them, especially when you've got a list of errands to run. You scan the to-do list as Darian drives you both into town, marveling at the sheer volume of tasks. Uh, the caterer's up first, and we have to be there in five minutes. Darian steps on the gas. That's right, the white linen napkins. But the blue! The bride wants white for her napkins. Stop trying to sell her on the blue. And don't forget her pine nut allergy. But my pisto! Use another nut! She told you about the allergy five times! Okay. If it helps... I also have the check. Yes, that definitely helps. 
We're here to... Ah, you must here be here for Lucia. She told me you would be choosing the bouquets for the bridal party. Me? She wanted me to choose the bouquets? You weren't sure why heading the forest was on the list, but this was not what you expected. You turn nervously to Darian. Lucia would definitely like pink ones, don't you think? You know I have absolutely no clue, right? Just fake it. Then yes, definitely the pink ones. 100%. <laughs> uh, pink roses with baby's breath, I like. And then you've also got pink, but then there's a blue ribbon. Uh, we'll go with the roses. Yeah, that's the one. Beautiful choice. And yes, she did say that if you somehow did not choose pink ones, I should steer you back in that direction. Tee hee, I win. Uh, can I see that without the Jordan almonds? Lucia hates Jordan almonds. Of course, and did you get a chance to try the chocolate covered strawberries? I did, but I better try a few more, just in case. How does someone hate Jordan almonds? I've never had them. Unfortunate incident at one of the first weddings we ever went to. We don't talk about it. Did someone choke on one? Aren't they the big one almonds? Like the big, big ones? For the next several hours, you dash around to a half a dozen other vendors, picking up last-minute items, confirming details, handing over checks. Darian translate when necessary. His Greek fluency both objectively handy and an extreme turn-on. Je ne sais quoi, merci beaucoup. We, I don't know what you want. <laughs> you know, I could see you checking out my butt when we were dropping off the payment for the photographer, right? I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm, you could at least control yourself at the jewelers. And where's the fun in that? He laughs and gives her knee a quick squeeze. It's amazing what a fun day has this has turned out to be, despite all the chaos. It's getting impossible to deny that Darian just makes everything better. And now we just have one last stop and not a moment too soon to hit the... Oh no, what was that? That did not sound good. No, it really didn't. I knew this rental car was going to be a disaster. I wouldn't be surprised if Alice rigged it. You quickly pull over to the side of the road and sure enough, the crappy rental car is dead. Oh no, now what do we do? You drop your head frustratingly onto the steering wheel and groan, but Darian just laughs. I'll handle it, Linux. Just give me a few minutes. What could you possibly... Trust me. Uh... You know full well I do. Please just don't leave long. I'm nervous here by myself and I can't handle the wrath of Alice if we're late. He drops a sweet kiss on your forehead. I promise I'll be back before you know him. He watches he jumps out of the car and heads over to a group of locals having lunch outside of a nearby cafe. Whatever he says to them has them cracking up, and you watch in disbelief as they follow him back to your car. Lennox, this is Stravo Stavoros and Costas. These kind men are going to help us. Stavros and Costas, this is my girlfriend Lennox. You know Darian's just simplifying for the sake of these strangers, but the term still sends butterflies flitting around in your stomach. Nice to meet you. You return the sentiment, but you're still floored about those strangers coming to your aid. Do you know how to fix this? Oh, we're not going to fix your car. You might want to step out, Lennox. You do, and watch in amazement as Darian... Stavros and Costas actually push it to a nearby mechanic. Your heart swells at Darian's easy camaraderie with him, his natural sweetness and humor. It makes you melt just a little. If only his family could see him like this. At the mechanics, the news is not great. It's going to be at least an hour. An hour. Ooh. What are we supposed to do for an hour? 
You're welcome to sit and wait. At least we have air conditioning. Actually, I have an idea. There's a little market nearby. Why don't we sneak off on a little date and explore together? Absolutely, I'm in. Endearing, tell the mechanic, you'll be back in an hour for the car and head out to the market. Between the scents of the flowers, the beauty of the fresh produce, and the glory of the clear sky, you're already feeling giddy. Then Daring takes your hand, swinging it gently between you as you walk. Your heart skips a beat. We don't even know anyone here, and he's still treating me like his girlfriend. Where to first? Hmm. I want to get... Shaved ice. Oh. God, it's been so long. Excellent choice. He approaches the young vendor who scoops out a dish for each of you. And I'm not talking like the, f like, I, I only had the thing that comes in the wrapper and an ice cream truck. Leave me alone. That's all we Americans have. Anyway, <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> mm, this looks so delicious and refreshing. Lick it slowly. Nibble it suggestively. Lap it childishly. Listen, I'm a child. Leave me alone. You take long, exaggerated licks of the ice, stopping after each one to suck at the juice. Darian laughs, his eyes sparkling with affection. Ow, brain freeze. Oh, poor you. He wraps an arm around you and pulls you into a quick, affectionate hug. Put the bottom of your tongue against the roof of your mouth in case no one ever knew that. You finish up your ices and toss the bowls in the trash before continuing on, examining booth after booth of wares. When you get to a stand full of beautiful flowers, Darian stops and chats with the seller in a rapid Greek. What's he saying? You find out a moment later when the smiling seller hands a tree of beautiful flowers to Darian, who promptly presents them to you. It's not a day without flowers, is it? Well, we haven't exactly gone on many traditional dates. I, I don't even know what that would look like for us. Good first dates have been very few and far and in between in my romance history. For me too, honestly, I I never know exactly what to plan. What's your perfect first date like? A first ideal date would be... Drinks and dancing. An in-flight makeout session. Ha ha ha. Back to what we did. Ha ha. Dinner and a movie. Nah, I feel like the dinner and the movie thing's like a third date to me. Maybe a fifth. I, I like coffee and talking. You know, getting to know your date. I know it's traditional and boring, but it's a standby for a reason. It gives you time to get to know each other. And then time to see if you just like them as much without the conversation. Hmm, plus if dinner goes well, maybe you'll really don't watch the movie. That's why I said third or fifth date. Exactly. How about you? What's your ideal first date? Not to be incredibly predictable, but I love taking someone to hear live music. If they're not into it, or we just don't click when someone when talking about it. I know someone's not for me. Ooh, and I'm glad I passed that test. With flying colors. And when we get back to Austin, I promise to take you somewhere even nicer. It blots a kiss on your cheek, setting off a little flock of butterflies in your stomach. As you continue walking around the market, it occurs to you that for the first time in a while, you have something to look forward to. You're not walking long before the stumble upon a local artist who makes absolutely stunning floral arrangements. Look. How gorgeous are those flowers? I bet Lucy would love these, and they'd look amazing added to her decor. I snap a pic and text it to her. Check out these incredible flower arrangements Darian and I just found. They're by a local artist. Oh my god, I love them! Where are you guys? A farmer's market. We had to make a little detour. As soon as I saw these, I thought they'd be a perfect addition to your wedding decor. Yes, please! I'm so happy you and Darian are spending some time together. I am too. You had a lovely market date with Darian. What'd she say? 
she said she ships as hard on me, technically. <laughs> but she said she loves them. Great. You hang back here in the shade and I'll go buy them. You pull Darian to you for a quick kiss, grateful for both his thoughtfulness and generosity. What was that for? Just you being you. While Darian goes to pay the artist for the flowers, you fan yourself and look around. All of a sudden you feel a little prickle in the back of your neck. It feels almost like I'm being watched. You shake off the weird vibe as much as you can and focus on spending time with Darian. An hour later, your rental car is good as well. Not new, but it'll run. What's last on the uh, list, boss? The most important errand of the whole day. Picking up the wedding cake. Delicious scents of sugary pastries. Crusty bread hit you as soon as you enter the bakery. Oh no, I want everything here. You walk up to a display case and your mouth waters as you drink in the gorgeous trays of baklava, lu lukomadis, and kurabidis. A warm hand lays on your back and Darian chuckles in your ear as he bends close to you. Focus, Lennox. Eyes on the prize. Wedding cake first, cake for us afterwards. The two of you make such a sweet couple. What an honor to be involved in your special day. You nearly jump a foot in the air. You hadn't even noticed her approach. She's like a ninja. A Greek ninja. Also, that menu for the prices of things? Wow. I also noticed the five above the bottom one. I can't say the C word, because YouTube. Oh no, that's not us. I mean, we are here for cake, but it's way too soon for us to be talking wedding. Maybe next week. Darian winks and you die a little inside. Could have fooled me. How about you try some cake, and just in case you change your mind? Well, I can't say no to free cake. I'll take a caramel macchiato. Maybe a mocha to go. Exactly why I'm marrying her next week. Oh, you two. Which one of these would you like? Strawberry, chocolate, vanilla. <laughs> chocolate. Excellent choice. Darren takes the plate and fork she holds out and cuts off a piece holding it to your mouth. Mmm, yummy. You keep your eyes fixed on him as you take a bite, snaking your tongue out and slowly lick up the frosting on your lips. Your pupils flare with one as he watches you and he feeds you another bite. Good. So good. You feel giddy as you continue to lick the offerings off the fort, but then something out of the window catches your eye. Yep, we are being followed, probably by a P.I. or paparazzi, one of the two. It's a strange man sporting a baseball cap, sunglasses, for the first, second time today. You feel that distinct feeling of having eyes on you. But this time, you're almost positive this man is watching you. You turn to the baker. I'm sorry to eat this delicious cake and run, but we really have to grab the, uh, Cassilis Feral wedding cake, like, immediately. Look, grab it right now. What's going on? I'll explain later, but we have to get out of here ASAP. As soon as you get the cake, you and Darian race into the car, holding the cake tight on your lap. You gonna tell me what's going on, Lennox? You press your lips unsure what to tell him. You aren't sure there's exactly someone after you, and you really don't like making him think you've lost your wits completely. Darian, I need you to trust me. You know I do, but I hope you trust me too. I do, of course I do, but I'm not sure if things are entirely in my head. I'm just trying not to scare you off. <laughs> you could never. He pulls into the street, and as soon as the bakery is out of view, you breathe a sigh of relief. What is going on? As soon as you get back to the hotel, you hand off the cake to Alice so it doesn't melt in the heat. She opens the box on spot as if certain you'll you'll have screwed it up. Looks perfect. I suppose I should thank you. Yeah, I suppose you should. I'm happy to help, Lucy. I need to thank me. She doesn't. As soon as Alice disappears in the hotel kitchen with a cake, you turn to Darian. 
<clears throat> I don't think she likes me very much. Oh, I think she just shows her love in a very special, unique way. You laugh and head inside and almost immediately bump into Shannon and Lucia. Oh, it's you. Oh, it's shut the hell up and die already. Oh, good to see you too, Shan. I'm really uh, enjoyed all this bonding. Then <laughs> <laughs> here I thought my response was smart ass. <clears throat> As am I. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go find Lucia. You mean me, the woman you're standing right next to? Wow, dude. What? Daring punch. Lucia sighs heavily and rolls her eyes. I mean, uh, Ellie. I have to go find Ellie. Another uh, glance in your... Without another glance in your direction, Shannon spins on his heel and walks off in the other direction. Lucia following miserably. Cool. So I guess things are just gonna stay extremely weird between me and Shannon. That's great. I don't get it. I knew it would be tense between the two of you, but this is out of control. I wish we hadn't had to come back so soon. There's such a terrible vibe here. We could go back to our room. I'm willing to bet that if we did, someone else would just hunt me down to ask me for even more favors. I don't think Alice has given up on ruining my day just yet. A slow, sultry smirk spreads across his lips. Well, there is one more option. He dangles the rental car keys in the air. We still have these. We do say we go for a drive and spend some alone time together. You know what? Let's hit the road, Jack. I hope that song started playing in all of your heads. I hope it did. Hope I've ruined your day now. <laughs> Thinking off a of daring reminds you of being a teenager, and it feels delicious. You hop into the rental car and drive along the beach until you find a secluded spot. Is it weird I'm totally turned on by the secrecy and sneakiness of running away? If that's wrong, I definitely don't want to be right. But um, shh. You park the car and turn to each other, your lips finding each other immediately. The quiz, oh, the quiz. The quiz, guys, the quiz. It's like the food, but with lips. The kiss quickly turns hungry, searching, both of you clutching at each other as if you'll never get enough. Keeping my hands off you all day was a nightmare. I am not cut out for good behavior. Good news. Good behavior isn't welcome in this car right now. You tumble in the back seat. A jumble of active limbs as you slide off your respective clothes. Much better. You definitely agree. But your words catch in your throat as Darian dies for your neck nipping and sucking at your skin. The incredible sensation makes you groan, but you know a hickey would be a major no-no in your wedding attire. Who cares? Darian, keep your marks where no one can see them. Noted. I don't think Lucia would uh, like that accessory. He slides down your body, kissing your shoulder and down to the side of your breast. There. He immediately obliges, sucking your skin into his mouth until you, your moans fill the car. Where last night had been sweet and tender, your sounds, touches, kisses are nothing of the sort. The heat between you and Darian is fierce, passionate, and in no time at all you shed the rest of your clothing. Damn, Lennox, you somehow always look sexier naked than I remember. Oh yeah? Let's see how uh, turned on you really are. Let's not. Basically, we did the deed. The rain short circuits as you find release with Darian finds his, the car filling with beautiful sounds of pleasure. As you collapse in a sweaty contented heap, you revel in the sound of your combined panting against the waves of the ocean. You curl into Darian, and the two of you cuddle in the back seat, basking in the afterglow. Then you just hear, Police, open up! <laughs> <laughs> That's YouTube if we ever do anything. Uh, anyway. You think this is what Alice had in mind when she rented you the car? I can't even imagine the level of fit she would throw if she knew uh, how this uh, thing was being used today. Reach for Darian's cheek, copping it in your hand. I just want to say, you mean so much to me. 
I know we're surrounded by people who don't appreciate all the things, uh, the great things about you. I just want you to know how much I appreciate the way you always seem to know what I need. His gaze softens, melting your heart, and he lifts your hand to his lips for a kiss. I feel the same way about you, truly. You dear, you hooked up in the car. As much as I hate to say it, and as much as I've always enjoyed myself out here, I think we probably need to head back. Reluctantly, the two of you quickly get dressed and fix your hair before returning to the resort. But as you begin the drive back... Mother... Did I just see what I think I saw? Alright. Without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please consider also supporting. Pinned comment and all that. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll say this. Um, so, the thing is, and, and maybe some, some ladies will learn a lesson from if you're listening right now. Uh, so this is a pro tip. <clears throat> I know a lot of you like the bad boys. Don't, don't... BS me, it's one of the reasons why you read some of these books, and let's be honest, you like the... It's one of the reasons why some of you ladies read these books, is because of, you know... Anyway, um, <clears throat> with that being said, in this book particularly, Darian is a person who clearly has gone through some things with his family. Clearly gone through a lot of things, and there's a lot of, like, things behind his wall, and a lot of things growing up, and the whole nine yards, right? So, typically, a lot of women that I know would call this baggage, and they'd be like, oh, no, no, no. Um, <clears throat> yet, I hate to tell you this, but one, first of all, no one's perfect. Ladies, stop seeking perfection. This goes for you guys, too, but most of us have kind of abandoned that market. Um, we can talk about this some other time. <clears throat> Long story short is, is baggage, the more baggage a man has is kind of like a judge of his character versus a guy who doesn't have much baggage. And there are guys out there who don't have much baggage and they still end up bad boys or they still end up good people too. But... <clears throat> When typically a person has had a lot of stuff, and this, like I said, this applies to everybody, but when people have gone through a lot of things, depending on how they turn out, how they act, and the things that they believe in and whatnot, so you want to get to know the personality first, no matter how unattractive or attractive they are, because looks are, are a, let's be honest, a dime a dozen, and it's, it's not everything, right? I've seen some of the most beautiful women in the world, and I've seen some of the most ugliest women in the world. Listen, I played Man of Medan last night. It was, woohoo. Anyway. <laughs> God, that old woman. Anyway. <laughs> if you haven't seen the game, it's up on the channel. But I would suggest a lot of you that want to find happiness look beyond the physicality. Because there are people out there who you know, may not be a 10 out of 10, but they have a heart and they will treat you right. Seriously. Um, you know, I'm not speaking just for myself. I'm speaking for a lot of people out there. There's a lot of good guys. There is. Um, and I speak on behalf of the, the, the couple that I know. Um, there are some good guys out there, you know, not the, not the nice guy mantra. Good guys. Like I said, get to know them, right? The baggage isn't shouldn't be red flags or whatnot. Like I said, it should be a judge of character. It should be how did you handle that? Get to know them. You might find out that you actually like them a lot more than you would have based off of just physicality or they have this or they went through that or whatnot. A lot of us guys play things close to the chest. And Darian is a perfect example of one of those guys. He's been through a ton. He's got a lot of baggage, you know, the whole nine yards. And hey, look at this. <clears throat> Based on his friends, well, not his friends, but Shannon's friends and Shannon's family. If you would have, and think about this, I mean, this is the whole plot of the story. If you didn't know that was Shannon, when you first went through all this, you would have not touched him with a hundred foot pole. And we would have had a huge regret, right? That's my point. So, take that lesson to heart. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.